Good morning, everyone. Unless it's not morning, then good whatever time it looks like outside your window. Uh, I am gonna, I've been stripping, I got the dash off from the tractor here, the 1855, the continuing restoration. Let's go over. I put that in the electrolysis tank. I haven't uh, power washed it off yet. I've got the fuel tank in the tank as well. I put that in yesterday, just checked it. I'll leave it in for a little while longer. But not knowing the condition of this hydraulic pump, I decided to just go ahead and buy a new one. Uh, buying the tractor, not running, you just don't know. Um, I guess I'll probably maybe put a seal kit in it, put it on the shelf, and if I have a tractor fail, we'll find out then. But uh, I don't really want to do that with a restoration that's getting painted up. So that's going to come off. Um, one of the things we'll notice on this tractor, since it's a 74, that cooler pump that's usually up here on the end generating here, a lot of people think it's the power steering pump. All it is is a cooler circulation pump. They eliminated that, but not the need for it, because what they did was replaced it with a pump that's in behind the hydraulic pump right in here. So now your oil comes out of the reservoir, goes to the cooler pump, and then comes out a line on the bottom and goes up to the cooler, comes back again, and actually goes all the way back to the remotes to get put back into the hydraulic system. So one of the things I'm going to do when I put this back together is this is the case bleed off line for a hydraulic pump. All these closed center pumps have that because there's always going to be a little bit of oil that slips past the pistons. If it was totally tight, it would, uh, wouldn't lubricate right and, um, and wouldn't move. So, so to keep the case pressure from building up and blowing out the seal, you have this case drain and it just goes back to the reservoir. Well, that case oil is generally the hottest. It's been squished, it's been turned around and everything. And so rather than put it right back into the reservoir, I am gonna come away, up with a way to go into that T, whether I make a four way or just drill and tap into the side of that T there. But one way or another, the new pump, the case drain is gonna go into the cooler pump which will then send the hottest oil to the cooler, which makes more sense. And uh, I think I'm gonna have to, I know I'm gonna have to make a new hose here because I'll have a different fitting, but we'll get to that. I also wanna pull this cover off because the neutral safety switch had been bypassed, so I'm guessing that is shot. I wanna fix that. I just wanna kinda look the transmission over there is a seal on the back side of the input shaft that I want to change for where the, or there should be one back there, for where the power shaft goes through. There is a seal on the shaft for this cooler pump that generally is pretty darn reliable, but as long as I'm this far, I'm going to get it replaced. Um, because if that one does go out, it can let coolant, or I'm sorry, uh, hydraulic oil go into the rear end. Not too often that's the problem. Um, if you've got this style of cooler pump like I have long of the whites had this the 2105s 285s if you're losing hydraulic oil in the rear end it's not your pump because the pump area goes into the cooler pump area so the cooler pump would just take any leakage from the oil pump out but it could be that seal that's farther in not too often that happens but once again I'm this close and it'll give us a chance to see how it works so I'm also going to get the top unit off. There's probably years worth of sludge in the bottom of the hydraulic pan. It'll go through a filter, but I'm just going to get it off in there and get it cleaned up. It'll make uh, uh, checking some of the stuff easier. I have this, once again, <laughs> this close to everything. So um, let's see, what should we do first? I think uh, just to get stuff out of the way, maybe I'll pull this hydraulic pump pretty darn simple disconnect the lines bolt on each side and slide her out 
Of course, it's a lot easier without a wheel and a platform and all that stuff in a way. I've already taken the filter housing off, so this side is disconnected. Let's get at it. From the paint and everything, I would say this is the original pump. So it's definitely got some hours on it. It must have been working at least uh, somewhat because they were still using the tractor up until the engine problems. Now, let's see how well this in. Might have to use a real wrench. Oh my. Get on there. Yeah, I swear it looks like someone hit that with a chisel at some point. Nice. Uh, she's rusty. Hey, it broke free. Getting a wonder. Right in the bucket. Well, Kyle is probably saying, I sent you these things. There, now it's in. Would have saved me some wiping. Great thing about crescent wrenches is there's always a bigger one. That's all it took. I guess it was the right tool for the job. All you crescent haters out there. If you happen to have an original style pump that has these uh, fittings for this hose, this compression type fitting that likes to fail, Maybaugh Tractor has a an adapter they've made up to replace it so you can put a hose with JIC fittings in there. They have the hose too. Not a paid endorsement. Just trying to help guys out to fix a problem that is a regular problem that gets quite annoying after a while. I personally haven't had too much trouble, but... Hey, look at that. The catcher thing caught the O-ring as it fell out. Thanks, Kyle. Other than finding room, changing a hydraulic pump on a 55 series, well, 1755 and larger, is pretty easy. Um, not a lot of parts that disassemble, just stuff to get out of the way so you can get to it, um, which is kind of the same thing, I guess. You know, for no longer it takes to pop a wheel off, it's probably the best way to do it. You got a lot more room to work, you don't have to take the platform off, but. This bolt here will, will be a lot harder to get to. But without the wheel in a way, you could uh, definitely open things up and make it a lot better. I'm definitely glad I'm swapping it out now instead of firing it up. Finding out it's either worn and making a lot of heat. Heat ain't necessarily a bad pump. It could be a uh, relief valve that is blowing or something else. But when these pumps do get worn, a lot of oil bypasses internally and they get hotter because of that. And that port I was telling you about. Let's just look at it again. The case drain. There is a test for that. It's you unhook the line going to the reservoir, cap it off, and then run this into a bucket. 
and oh, I'd have to look it up. But there's a certain amount that's allowable, somewhere around less than a gallon in a minute or something. But if you start getting more than that, then too much oil is slipping by internally and starting to cause more heat. You're losing pressure and power. So that is one of the tests you could do on these. The biggest thing is uh, knowing the right number. And it might be smaller than I think. Maybe I'll find that before this video is over. Just turn just hard enough where I can't finger turn it out. This, the pump is now where it can come out. A little bit of wiggling. There it is. And move my bucket just a little bit. Because there's some oil in that cooler pump. Oh, let's set this over here. So now that that pump's out of the way, let's just follow the oil on through. The oil comes out of the pump, goes into this hose, goes down there into this valve body. And um, that valve body has three different valves in it. Well, and then there's a fourth one stacked on top here. And we'll start with this. That's your unloader valve. And what that does, it sends, when it, you shut the tractor off, it's spring-loaded and it pushes a plunger pushes a piston or restrictor away from here and so when you crank it over the next time there's not enough flow yet just getting it going not enough pressure and so the oil goes through here and up into the cooler or back to the reservoir if the cooler pump ain't uh, turning fast enough but they are connected together once the tractor fires up, things are spinning faster. The hydraulic pressure comes up. And, uh, oh, you got this line that's coming off. The same circuit as the steering is coming off from. So it pushes that uh, plunger in, seals off this passage so it can't return that way anymore. And now all your oil is going to where it needs to be. But all it does is unload the pressure while you're cranking over so it stop fighting your starter and you get better cranking speed so uh, we got that and then um, oh gosh I'm trying to remember which valve is which here um, just was looking it up the other day but you got uh, a uh, pressure relief valve and I'm gonna pull this apart and put new o-rings in it at least to seal it up so we can go over it more at that time but a pressure relief valve for high pressure, that should be set at 2,500 PSI. A pressure reducing valve that drops down to, I believe, about 180. And that's, this line here goes up and feeds this block, which then splits and uh, part of it goes to the brakes. The other part goes to the PTO. Um, and then there's also a priority valve in all this. And the priority valve makes sure that your steering gets oil and i do believe that feeds the brake and pto line as well so that if your pressure is low your flow is low you always have at least steering and brakes for safety reasons so that's your three caps in here um, oil comes out of this port this one would be the power steering i've already got that line off this one goes back to make the unloader valve do its job and then this one from here goes up goes up to the three-point hitch and uh, goes into the three-point hitch for the servo valve right there continues it's also can continue its path around to the other side for the remotes goes through the remotes returns to the reservoir but since it's a closed center system it's only pumping as much flow as it takes to make pressure so when you close the remotes when you're not running a three-point there's very little oil going through basically none um, but when you make demand then the pump changes the position starts pumping more oil to try to keep the pressure up and so you get more flow so that's the gist of it so let's see let's get some more of this stuff off 
We'll eventually get this valve body off, but I need to disconnect this line. And uh, let's see, there is a, another line that comes off from it and returns to sump. I think that's part of the pressure reducing valve. It might be priority. I can't remember. So many things to remember. Ever since man rubbed two sticks together, we've been finding new uses for fire. Even with a line wrench, this one is not wanting to give up. It's got some corrosion. There's a dairy farm, so manure gets down in there. And uh, makes things bad. So we're gonna try heating her up before we round it off and really cry. kind of thinking my well it barely goes over the line I was gonna say my uh, my line wrench is uh, sprung but I think it's just that nut is so rusty right it's lost diameter might have to replace that line if it's still available Where the line wrench failed, the vice grips succeed. It will make it all the way out. Okay, this blind that uh, feeds the brakes and the PTO. Not want to thread out the bottom of the valve body very well. So rather than standing on my head to do it, since uh, I'm pulling it off anyways, we'll just take it off with the valve body. <laughs> I can be on a bench where it's easier to work on. Since man first rubbed two sticks together, he's been looking to make a bigger fire. Come on. Guess it needs more. No. I think I thought about it. Uh-oh, I might have gotten a nut too hot. Squished it. There it goes. Oh.
Well, might as well try this one too. It was struggling. Hopefully I didn't melt the screen. <laughs> Toing. Let's see if I can even hold the thing. So far so good. I think that needs time to cool. <laughs> now that bolt head's rusted enough to where at least uh what is this a 12 point and yeah, i'll get a six point socket see if i can't get it that way See what we can see. That feels good. That's the high range, or I'm sorry, the low range gear that can get welded to the shaft. And generally, if they've welded or gotten gone without lube and worn, just a little bit of rust in there from sitting. I think nothing that warrants tearing it down. Turn smooth, no noises. Of course, the uh, little rust gum there, we'll flush it out. This gasket separated good enough. I bet this has been opened up before for some reason. But probably can reuse that gasket. Not like it's got to hold a lot back. Of course, the thing I want to reseal is under there, but the neutral safety switch is right here. And if it ain't hooked up, there was a reason for it. I've got new ones. It clicks like it's working, but no guarantees there. As you can see, when it's in neutral, the roller comes up and make, connects the circuit if it's in gear off to one side or the other then it clicks down and uh, breaks the circuit and the starter doesn't kick in nothing terribly complicated ooh second shift made this piece see I think that'll work. What little bits don't come off, I can clean up with a wheel of some kind. Oh, in order to facilitate getting that baby off, there's a couple things I'm gonna do. It's ready to lift, bolts are all out and everything. I gotta pick up my tools. I want to put it on the engine stand and that way I can rotate it to work on it. Of course the engine's on there and I can get the flywheel on the engine while it's on the stand. So what I'm going to do 
is put the engine and set it in the frame for now. Lift her up, set her in. I can get the flywheel on, time the injection, get the clutch on and stuff. Um, kind of get it out of the way for the moment and, and, and make it look like a tractor. Then I can uh, get the hydraulic unit off, put it on here, rotate. I wanted to talk about these lift eyes. There were actually two of them. Your earlier tractors like uh, 88s, Super 88s, they used a coarse threaded lift eye instead of a fine thread like this uh, 310 does. So uh, other than that, they're identical. Just uh, coarse thread versus fine thread. Um, I don't think this is available anymore. Oh, I thought the number was on here. Let me clean this baby up. A guy could uh, probably make one with like a barrel nut and a and a uh, lift eye threaded into the barrel nut if you got enough barrel nut length. To <laughs> I have no idea why there's threads on the outside. I've never used that part, but uh, maybe the fine threaded one has the. There should be an ST number on it. I believe there were. Supplied by Owatonna Tools. It's got 8075 on the eye. Then it says ST dash. I think that's 137A. Which ST always stood for service tool. Alright, that's the fine threaded one. Just as simple as spinning that baby on down there. Ping. Ta-da! I think we're ready to lift. Um, got a little lift pressure on it. I'm gonna take a big flat wide chisel and get under this corner. There's a dowel pin here and a dowel pin right there. You can just see them. The back one you can see easier. But I need to get that lifted up out of there. And hopefully that's balanced pretty good. We'll find out soon enough. It's actually, it's actually not too often you have to pull a hydraulic unit on these 50s 5 series with the pump being on the outside. Mostly if you have to do transmission work or something. I'm mostly doing it for inspection work. Uh, do some seals and stuff. And, That 
weren't too bad. Looks like I got it. Pan is with the uh, top. Yeah, she's gonna be a little front heavy. I might have to do something different with my chain. It's not super out of balance. Maybe I'll just get a come along. Go from here to there. On the 50 series, the seat frame bolts up farther and that makes pretty good balance, but not so much here. So far, so good. Other than the one thing I really wanted to check, I'm glad I did. Let's see if we can get this light point down in there. Right down here, there's a seal, and the seal housing is there, but the rubber is gone. And that seal prevents oil from walking up the, the uh, live shaft up to the engine. So, good things. Good thing I did open her up. I could get the clutch wet and then it's slipping and everybody's crying and especially with new paint. You can see how the uh, hydraulic pump is driven. Live shaft goes through there. That turns easy enough. That's good, smooth. Not feeling any end play. Those are both tapered bearings. Uh, the seal I was mentioning earlier is in here, so we'll pull that housing. And then there's also the, yeah, it's got some looseness to it. Let's get this light over here. The chain that drives the, the um, lube pump. Hmm, I guess I need to drop the drain plug for yeah, um, that. There's still a little oil up in that little compartment. Things are looking good. No chips on the pinion. Well, it looks really nice. No weird wear on the differential teeth. Could kind of see the bull gears before with the PTO unit out. But this will give me a chance to flush it out good. But yeah, with the looseness in that chain. At one time, they offered an endless chain. The teeth don't look too bad. I can see the master link right there, but there's there's some looseness in her. So I'm thinking I'm gonna see what I can do about finding one of those endless chains. Instead of having a master link, it's just all custom made for this. And uh, yeah, it could be a little bit of a trick getting it on, but. And then next trick might also be, I should pull that lube pump while I'm right here and check the condition of that and I think that could be an issue getting it back without hitting that plate there well it's all stuff that will make for good video as you can see the transmission lube comes from the pump goes into the side here Right under here is a relief valve. That's what this top hole here is. 
is uh, if the relief opens up, it just squirts back into the transmission, goes through your filter, and then comes through these lines to feed everything else. And there should be, well, I guess they come off the front for the one that feeds the uh, transfer case. So overall, I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing. Just a couple minor things, things I'm glad I opened it up for, but uh, nothing that's gonna require major repairs or anything. Just more uh, minor maintenance that while we're here, I wonder if this has been into before, the fact that these uh, this gasket separated so well. Often that's what we would do is uh, glue one side and put grease on the other. So if I ever had to work on it again, I do not know. Now let's get this baby mounted on the stand. I'll do like I did with the 1850. Bolt on with these four bolts, then I can rotate it around. I'm gonna change the lift piston seals. Um, and probably some of these seals that come out the handle seals so that I ain't got any, hopefully no seepage. I well, got them out into the engine stand. I just could not get the fourth bolt hooked up, but I figure three, three quarter inch bolts and three five eighths bolts. It's holding, I guess is the gist of it. But that does make it nice where you can rotate it around. We'll be working on resealing the three-point hitch lift cylinder. And so that's nice to be able to roll that over. I will take this top cover off and there's an O-ring seal on the three-point hitch arm or you know lever there. There's another O-ring and two O-rings on this one, which it doesn't look like it was leaking, but we're gonna change them so that, uh, so that they don't. That should hopefully be easier to take out from the inside. Uh, you'll get to see the servo valve on these is right up top, much easier to work on. So all sorts of good things coming ahead for this unit to make good video. But we'll call that the end of this one. As always, I appreciate everybody watching and we will see you in the next one.